this and risks his own life to save another officer. When I started, New London was a nice, quiet New England city. The type of crime we saw then was completely different than what we see now. Maybe during the summer it would get busy at the local beach. On a Navy payday, some of the military people would get involved in scrapes, but nothing serious. Certainly not the nightmare of drugs. Things started to change in the 60s, and now it's really a nightmare. I don't recall having a prostitution arrest in London until the mid-70s. But all of a sudden, we noticed an awful lot of prostitutes on the street, and we had a major problem on our hands. There's three of them in one car. Get a shot of that. I don't know how much of this they can run at the family out. They'll show it. People in this area have spent a lot of money on their homes. They're fed up. You see what I mean? Why isn't the police department doing something? And if they're not doing something, it means they're condoning what's happening. Condoning, gee. We are shoveling people into jail. Yeah, get them to talk to my wife. I start at six and at seven in the morning, I'm still here writing reports. Yeah, I busted six girls last night, alone. Terry and Bill ended up directing traffic to keep all the Johns away from me. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I know you're all doing your best. Okay, it's a rotten detail, but we do what we can. And for what it's worth, I still like you. <laughs> Trish, get wired up. Well, you're eager. Okay, let's get going. Maybe tonight we'll turn the corner. Captain Pearson? Uh, we're from Channel 26. Oh, yes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the press will be covering us tonight. Captain, I... Trish, they know they're not allowed to reveal your face. They just want to shoot parts of the operation. It'll be a chance for the people to see that you're doing your best. Well, let's go do our best, boy. You better. <laughs> We started running stings in 87, and we were chasing them off the streets, but not eradicating them. They would just move from one spot to another. It was really a game we were playing, but we were having an impact. There weren't as many girls on the street. You just have to stay on top of it if you can find the money. Foremost, we always wanted to protect an undercover officer. And if we thought we didn't have a good arrest, we would have bought it. The guy got to have his day in court. And with reputations, jobs, and God forbid, marriages on the line, we had to have an airtight case. The basic setup involved as many as 16 people. The undercover policewoman, a backup car, another vehicle with arresting officers to pick the Johns up, and then you needed a marked car with uniformed police officers in case somebody decided to flee. You're talking about a big operation. I would be in the monitoring van watching Trish and listening to The Wire. I coordinated the whole thing with Bill Gavin. We would tell her, or Trish would tell us if something was wrong by way of a signal, we would then abort the operation. Hi, honey, you looking for a date? Maybe. You want to get in and talk about it? Why don't we talk about it first? Look, get in. I'm losing heat with this window open. Come on, get serious or get lost. bus in two hours. She's just didn't work. Yeah, let's grab a coffee. She must be freezing to death out there. Ladies and gents, that's a coffee break. Terry, give Trish a ride back in. Is it usually slow? I mean, one arrest every hour? Uh, it depends. It's cold tonight. It's wet. Business is off. Wouldn't it be easier if she went with the guys in the tailor? I mean, don't they get suspicious if she doesn't get in the car? The duck never gets in the car. The duck? Me, the undercover. It's too dangerous. Maybe we should risk it. No way. I'm sure that we could control it, John. I don't want Trish getting into cars. John, if it'll help. No. Yeah, if she gets in any trouble, well, we can get to her in 30 seconds. It's not safe. Just we've got enough guys. Hey, it's not going to happen. Well, we better get out of here. Don't you go getting in any cars. You hear? Yeah, okay. 
John. Thanks. When it comes to the music of the 90s, anything goes yours. We'll be right back. You can't top the copper top. Trish made the deal through the windows and then walked around the car and read the license plate. So we would hear it and record it over the wire. And then she'd say, go down the alley because there are too many cops around here. And that's when he got last sued. It worked beautifully. You'll never make this stick. It's your word against mine. It's all on tape, sir. You want this played in court to the whole world? Here's what you want me to do? That's your privilege. Nine out of ten times, they would say, let's just forget about it. Settling out of court. Thanks, Trish. Go on back to your location. We're standing by, John. Start rolling when he comes by again. It's coming back. Yeah. Blue Chevrolet. Hi. Hi. How you doing? <laughs> Not Working? too bad. What do you charge? Depends what I'm charging for. You're not a cop, are you? No, I'm not. Are you? Yeah, you kidding? What are you looking for? As much loving as I can get for twenty dollars. <laughs> I get the picture. There's too many cops around here. Pull into that alley. I'll meet you there in a minute. <laughs> Don't keep me waiting. Ooh. <laughs> Connecticut plate seven seven five TBK. Get down. All units. He just pulled into our driveway. Want to board? No, no. Everybody stay put. We'll be the arrest team on this one. There was just something about this guy. A gut feeling. I just Lay didn't like Trish. him. I felt there was something wrong here. Trish walked up and opened the passenger door to speak to him. Hi. They were now only a few feet away. Gavin was hoping to get some more evidence on the guy. But I thought we had enough, so I said, let's go. Oh, no, no, not yet. He's close enough to grab her. <laughs> let's take him. Police, you are under arrest. Turn off the car. Come out with your hands up. Come on, stop the damn car. Trish, get out of the way. My foot was twisted, and the side of it was dragging along the ground. And my knee was dragging on the pavement. And the guy was biting my arm while he was driving. Go around, cut the bastard off. The whole time I was being dragged, I was worried Trish was being dragged on the other side. I felt I had to stop him to save her. I just felt something else crushing me. The two cars crashed together, and I was pinned in between. Johnny. Oh, take it easy. It's OK. Let's look. Trish. I'm OK, John. I'm right here. She got free before he dragged you off. My wife. Get my wife. I already called her. She'll meet us at the hospital. Tell her I'm all right. Shh. Don't talk. It'll be okay. How is he? Do you have a comment? Yeah. You still think we're not doing our job? I was relieved that Trish was okay, but I was in an awful lot of pain. It felt like William Refrigerator Perry was standing on my chest. I'd broke seven ribs. I'd been in so many battles. 
I've been banged and kicked and spit on. I've been involved in incidents with weapons and fist fights. But here, I didn't have control of anything. I didn't know where the hell he was taking me. And I was afraid if I let go, I would go into the wheels of the car or Trish would be crushed on the other side. I think I attribute people's feelings about policemen to television. Television has been a big educator. When people see a police story where a crime is solved in 60 minutes, all the paperwork is done and the bad guys locked up, they wonder, how the hell come you guys can't do that? Cop Cops returns in a moment with the aftermath. Of in a taste test, James, James Campbell died of multiple gunshot wounds. An autopsy showed that he was under the influence of PCP at the time of his death. Robert Halford retired from the Tacoma Park Police Department because of permanent damage to his right hand. Today, he continues to look for a job as satisfying as his police career. Robert Pisco, a naval officer, was convicted and fined $500 for driving while intoxicated. He was convicted and given two years probation for assaulting a police officer, a one-year suspended sentence for reckless endangerment. Captain John Pearson was honored as Policeman of the Year by the Murphy Rathborn Post, veterans of foreign wars. His injuries forced him to retire in 1990.